Hey friends, thanks for being here today. I'm Xavier and I'm back with another video for you. If you like this content, just make sure to hit that little like button and make sure to hit that little red subscribe button. That way you're always kept informed. In addition, you can also find me on Instagram at The Black Case Files and on TikTok also on The Black Case Files. There is no Twitter because I still can't figure that out. Anyways, let's get into it. Today, we are discussing Leon Mercer Jordan, an all-around hero who was assassinated over 40 years ago and whose murder is still unsolved. This story has everything, and I do mean everything. Murder, mystery, and possible mob involvement. A little background information about Mr. Jordan. Leon Jordan grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, and attended Lincoln High. After high school, he served in the United States Army, then attending Wilberforce University in Ohio. It was here that he met his wife, Orchid Ramsey, marrying her in 1932 and graduating in 1933. After graduation, Jordan worked as a school teacher, and eventually he left teaching and joined the Kansas City Police Department in 1938, rising to the rank of detective. Jordan took a leave of absence in 1947, choosing to go to Africa and spent eight years training the police forces of Liberia. While in Africa, he helped coordinate the rescue of a French High Commissioner of West Africa and 16 other French officials after their plane made a forced land. He was awarded, and I forget the pronunciation, the Chevalier of the Order of the African Star by Liberian President William Tubman in 1948. He returned to Kansas City in 1952 and was promoted to police lieutenant, the first African-American to hold that rank in KCPD's history. However, he discovered that he had little power in the department, so he resigned and he went back to Liberia for three more years. Jordan returned to Kansas City permanently in the mid-1950s and purchased the Green Duck Tavern. Green Duck Tavern, the Green Duck Tavern probably needs its own story. I might look into doing something like that. Anyways, right now, the Green Duck Tavern is a part of the African American Heritage Trail of Kansas City, Missouri, which is virtual and I highly suggest you spend some time just looking around, checking it out. The link is listed here below in the, uh, in the description box. The tavern became a place for robust discussion where strong disagreements about politics and civil rights could be hashed out without fear at a time when access to white owned facilities was limited and civil rights activists were routinely harassed by police and the public. Having a safe place to discuss these issues and reach consensus was essential. This is from Michael Kubik, Green Duck Project. In 1958, Jordan became a Democratic in 1958, Jordan became a Democratic committee man for the 14th Ward of Kansas City. Freedom Inc. or Freedom Incorporated of Kansas City, Missouri is a political organization that was founded in 1961 by Bruce Watkins, Howard Maupin, Charles Moore, Fred Curls, and Leon Jordan. Freedom Inc. was crucial to desegregation of Kansas City, Missouri public facilities as well as the election of many Black Missouri state representatives. In addition, they were also uh, important for the 1991 election of Emanuel Cleaver as the first Black mayor of Kansas City. In 1964, Freedom Inc. put forward eight candidates for office, seven of which won. Among them was Jordan, who was elected the first of three terms in the Missouri House of Representatives. Jordan was campaigning for a fourth term at the time he was murdered. At about 1 a.m. on July 15, 1970, Jordan was killed just outside his restaurant, the Green Duck Tavern, by three shotgun blasts. Eyewitnesses reported that the three killers were African-American. Three men were arrested for the murder, including at least one affiliated with a criminal group called the Black Mafia. One man was acquitted and charges were dropped uh, against the other two suspects. However, recent evidence suggests a tie between his murder and local mafia. 
the smoking wavered gun. The shotgun that was suspected of killing Leon Jordan had been stolen and was abandoned immediately. When it was recovered, it was traced to a burglary five years earlier in Independence, Missouri, and suspected to be a part of a cache of stolen weapons sold through a North, Italian, North End Italian fence in 1966. After a reporter asked about the whereabouts of the shotgun used in the Jordan murder, police acknowledged they had lost. A week later, a Kansas City crime lab employee rediscovered the weapon, a Remington 12 gauge Wingmaster shotgun in the trunk of one of the department's patrol cars. Police don't know how it got there, but they have a theory that some weapons experts find hard to believe. Police contend they lost track of the gun sometime in 1973. The following year, they unknowingly and serendipitously purchased the same shotgun from a local gun shop. They apparently never checked the serial number of the newly purchased gun. Instead, they refurbished it and put it back in service in one of their own patrol cars. Mano, a low profile mob associate known on the street as Shotgun Joe, may have provided the gun and recruited the killers in what appears to have been a complex plot to murder Jordan. Tamano was never questioned by police and died of cancer in 1972. If Jordan was the victim of a mafia hit, said Alvin Sykes, a local civil rights leader who pushed police to reopen the case, that scary fact will not deter me from cooperating with the thorough and credible investigations being conducted by the Kansas City Police Department and the Kansas City. Jordan angered North End faction politicians and members of the mob who supported them. An ardent civil rights leader, Jordan fought for black political power and to end white faction control of black voters. Orca Jordan, who died in 1995, believed her husband's murder was politically motivated. She told investigators at the time because freedom had become the single most powerful political club locally. Several Jordan confidants had told police the same thing. She said her husband sometimes used to change freedom's endorsements of certain candidates even after being offered money to do so and added that shortly before his death, Jordan had angry disagreements with North End politicians about the, about the freedom ballot recommendations in the upcoming election. Leon stood for the right things and would naturally have been opposed to what the North Side factions were doing, said Bill Phelps, who served with Jordan in the General Assembly. Not only was he a challenge to their political influence and possibly some of their criminal activities, he had physically attacked a state legislator supported by North End supported by North End political groups. In May 1965, Jordan unleashed a roundhouse punch in the state capitol that floored Frank Mazuka. While not considered a mob associate, Mazuka was known to support its interests in Jefferson City, according to former colleagues. Jordan accused Mazuka of purposely embarrassing some of Jordan's former Black colleagues in, in the end, Mazuka died of a heart attack in January of 1969. Jordan was killed 18. The Mazuka incident, combined with all the other issues the mom had with Jordan, may well have been enough to get him killed, said Bill Owsley, a retired FBI agent who specialized in organized crime in Kansas City. Political influence and control was of such import to the outfit that, they, that it could get you killed, he added. Two police informants who were members of the Black Mafia, a group involved in drugs, prostitution, and murder, maintained that was what happened. Comment below if you want me to do a story about the Black Mafia. According to one report in the original investigation, it's determined that Centimano was a small-time hoodlum who associated with both the North End and the criminal elements in the Black community. A freelance hit? 
organized crime experts said that while black killers have carried out mob hits, it, it was unlikely that top level mobsters in Kansas City would have hired them directly to handle a high profile hit such as the Jordan killing. Jordan's murder more likely would have been the work of a mob of mob associates looking to curry favor with the leaders of organized crime. Again, this is from Bill Owsley of the FBI. That is eerily similar to what happened in the separate killing just months after Jordan's murder. In October of 1970, some of Kansas City's top mobsters were indicted for running an interstate sports gambling ring out of a North End social club called The Trap. So where's the case now? Kansas City Police uh, last summer reopened the Leon Jordan murder case, the oldest unsolved murder ever undertaken by the department's cold case unit. The decision to reopen the case came after lobbying by local civil rights activist Alvin Sykes and after a July 11th article in the Kansas City Star. Well, thanks for watching friends. I'll see you next time with another Black Case File. I try to upload between three to four times per week, so make sure to follow the Black Case Files on Instagram to see what's going to go up next. See you next time.